Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's great to stay up late. Good morning. Good morning to you and you and you and you and you. Um, I'm just trying to find the jingles. But I can't get rid of this really ugly head that's on a document just, just over here. How are we all? How is everyone? Uh, I've got to be done prompt prompt at 9.35, maybe a push 9, no, 9.35, prompt. Um, guys, how are we all? It's... <laughs> it's... Jesus Christ, guys, it's the Friday quiz time. An opportunity for us all to go into the weekend feeling like complete nincompoops. I love the word nincompoop. I love the word scallywag. I love the word, how's your father? (laughs) Now, before we get going, we have some catastrophic news that revolves around Easter. It took us all by surprise last night in the Curly Cooks. Didn't take Dina by surprise because nothing does. I think Dina just sits there with a great big calendar. The first thing she sees at the end of her bed. In fact, I think the footboard of her bed is probably a calendar with every conceivable date and anniversary uh, right down to Womble Day and things like that. I, I, I know. I mean, I wonder if she's got pegging day. Probably not. Um, anyway, it's Easter. We're all shocked. And to quote Lee Peart, we're all tired (laughs) and it hasn't even started. But as I was just sort of grabbing a few pictures to show you something and pulling a few bits and bobs together just for us to go live. um, Oh, Edward Bevington, she's just organised. She might be organised, but she's fucking mad. Um, By the way, any youngsters here, we do swear. And this is not actually, if you look at the details, because someone came through the other day saying, oh, sweary, sweary. Uh, we're an adult channel, so I do apologise. Um, but uh, we all, all kids are, are welcome. I mean, we swear in front of our kids. So, you know, as, as long as you don't mind. Um, but anyway, this story landed as I was about to press live and as the coffee machine was going, bleh, bleh, bleh. and I can't believe this. Iceland, listen to this headline, guys. Tell me what you think. Prepare yourself. Iceland the supermarket, not the country, faces backlash after the Christian symbol on the hot cross bun is replaced with ticks. I beg your pardon? Iceland faces backlash after Christian symbol on hot cross buns is replaced with ticks. Julie, it was you who brought the Cornish salt. Thank you so much, Julie. Yeah, no, we, we literally, we all covet that. We run around for the cupboards looking for the different flavours. What do you think? Jesus would be disappointed. Um, I don't even think of the cross, though the cross on the hot cross bun is obviously an aspect of Christian uh, uh, religion and tradition and it, you know it emerged from the days of trying to lessen the temptation of a bun trying to kind of you know the cross was like an antidote to the sweet confectionery held therein and all that malarkey um but yeah iceland is is trying a new kind of hot cross bun which has a tick on the top of it rather than a cross what's going on guys you understand mt how do why do you understand why yeah, come on I don't think, here's where I don't think this is a religious thing, and I don't think one has to take, you know, um, emergency action or evasive procedures. Hang on. It's weird sound over there. Um, they do not call it hot cross bun. Who? Oh, they call it, what do they call it? The ticked bun. The ticked bun. Some have reacted angrily to this, um, seeing the hot cross bun as a slight on the... I See, I don't get cross about the Christianity aspect. I get cross about the fact that they've removed the, cro- the cross, because that's a hot cross bun. 
I don't look at a cock cross bun and think, Jesus. I don't. Sorry for anyone who's religious, but I just don't. Um, and I think that cross is vital because, I don't know, it creates dimples, it creates sections. It means it's just familiar. It just, and you feel that strange line of, and we, I mean, who doesn't bite into a hot cross bun and sort of, you know, absent mindedly goes, what makes the cross? And then when you think about it a bit too much, you kind of think, I don't like the cross, actually. You think, is it like sort of some kind of mm, weird stuff? Anyway, Iceland, in trouble, in trouble with the public because they've got rid of the cross and a hot cross bun. What else are we going to talk about today? I'm going to be showing you some really, really, really awful, awful sculptures, and you're going to tell me who you think they are. Um, that's right. Uh, there's a football flavour, actually, to today. Um, and you probably noticed that we've got Gwyneth's open-eyed meditations. Gwyneth Paltrow, she's back up to her weird shit again. Um, she now meditates, apparently, with her eyes open, filling a dishwasher. I just feel that me and Nads have to have a go at this for some reason. Keir Starmer, I have to say it, Keir Starmer's just pissed me off again. And I don't like the guy, and I think his priorities are all wrong. And that's related to football, weirdly. Um, I'm going to talk briefly about the shit show that is the way in which this government and the West are six months after the whole awfulness of everything that happened on October the 7th and then the even more dramatically awfulness that's happened in terms of numbers of deaths and what have you um, in Israel and Gaza, how suddenly this slow glacial shift towards maybe we'll stop selling arms and all this kind of malarkey, um, it's just not good enough. Just not good enough. It's not good enough. It's not. It's not enough. No one's impressed. No one believes it. And it's like standing. Anyway, we'll get to that in a minute. And of course, we're going to very briefly talk about the only reason I pop Kate Middleton there, Kate Middleton mess, is that Rachel Johnson. Not personally a fan of Rachel Johnson, but Rachel Johnson articulates in a piece in the Evening Standard some thoughts that I think, again, given how we have all been hoodwinked by the mainstream media, told to think what we should think and all this kind of stuff, not that it matters and not that we should go prying for what the truth of what is going on with uh, Kate Middleton is, but Rachel Johnson's very, very firm about the idea that she can't believe everyone has just said, yes, of course, that was Kate Middleton coming out of the farm shop. So, let's start. Just one second. Can someone say to me at the end, Put your freezer back on. The freezer is making the oddest sound. It sounds like a person slowly marching towards us. It was like, it's like, bloody hell, someone's dragging their leg. It was quite disconcerting. By the way, the juice is loose. Did anyone see? Beetlejuice trailer, go and check it out. <laughs> it looks so, it's a teaser actually. Looks so exciting. You know what? I love stuff that just takes us back to the 80s. Ghostbusters is out too. So exciting. Um, okay, let's talk about Gwyneth Paltrow. So Gwyneth Paltrow is um mad. She's mad, she's she's in a world of her own, but good luck to her. You know, she's happy, she's in this incredibly odd, rarefied sort of place where I don't know, she turns orgasms into candles, she turns pleasure into bags. Uh, what are those what are those bags called tote bags? What is, can can I ask someone? What is the point of a tote? What what is the thing about tote bags? They don't carry enough. They don't. They're not. They don't stay on the shoulder enough. Um, why are they called tote? Um, why are they so annoying? Why are they? Is it because they're sustainable? I presume it is. It's going to be ecological. I mean, of course, I'm not suggesting for a minute I prefer a plastic bag, but I like a good old Sainsbury's bag for life. Doubles up as a toilet or a latrine, if you're Nadia. Um, so, yeah, you know, so Gwynny, 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 she's in a she's in a weird, weird world. But you know what? She's been talking because she's signed up to and she's promoting a new meditation app called Moments of Space. 
And this is about finding moments of space in, in, in your day to day life. She said, you know, the, the, the idea behind this is that you don't meditate with your eyes shut. You know, traditionally, it's like, please sit down. Cross your legs. I, I find crossing my legs so stressful. I find that even in yoga, to cross my legs, I feel humiliated that I can't cross. Well, I can cross my legs, but I don't want to. I find crossing my legs really, I don't know, humiliating, intimidating though. And people who can cross their legs with such sort of glee and alacrity, you just feel like breaking their knees. I don't know. Anyway, so she says, you don't have to sit and close your eyes. You can keep your eyes wide open and meditate. Isn't that just called getting bored? I mean, I think Nadia meditates all the time when I'm talking to her because her eyes don't focus on me. It's like when she's talking to me, she does this. So I'm I talk, talking to you and then she'll go. Shark's eyes. Morning, everyone. Lots of mornings coming in. Hi, Sonia. Um, are, what, are what expensive? God, is there a, a delay going to start? Is there a delay? In it? Is, uh, are these expensive? What's these, Faith? Oh, tote bag. Tote bag's great for shoplifting, says Good Ship Lollipop. Um, yeah, having a crap morning. Oh, Emma Apthorpe, boyfriend surprised me with a weekend holiday. Now realise I've lost my passport. Oh, no. Well, if you... Oh, no, it depends where you are. You might be able to go in and get it yourself. Um, more of the higher levels can do it. I can't, I can't do it. So, you know, so anyway, so yes, yeah, so Gwyneth Paltrow, she's, she's suggesting, right, okay. So she even says that she can meditate whilst filling the dishwasher. Um, this is called open-eyed meditation, which encourages the practitioner to maintain a gentle gaze while meditating to help achieve deeper mindfulness. Um, there's a book called Eyes Wide Open, as opposed to Eyes Wide Shut. Eyes Wide Shut? No, that's that film, isn't it? And the author, Will Johnson, says to literally see things as they are, not just how we perceive them to be. This is a practice that's been has centuries behind it. Well, it might have centuries behind it. Um, but anyway, so Gwyneth Paltrow has recorded, has lent her voice to some of the meditations on this app. And apparently, I'm going to listen to one at some point over the weekend. Me and Nads are going to have a go at it. Um, and apparently, when she delivers her speech or her kind of monotone meditation, there are such long pauses between every word um, that you just, you could drive a bus through them. The problem with this story for me is I don't think Gwyneth Paltrow fit, fills her dishwasher. Do you know what I mean? I just don't think she does it. She says from loading the dishwater washer to walking down a hallway. Well, I, I believe that Gwyneth Paltrow has probably walked down hallways, but I don't buy her filling a dishwasher. Uh, there was a very funny moment whilst Greg Williams, who's the sort of, you know, Hollywood photographer, whilst uh, he was photographing her getting ready, he said to her, so are you actually meditating now? Uh, whilst he was talking to her, he said, are you meditating now? So she's having a conversation and he, he, he's, you know, really nice photographer. He's doing a nice job for her. And he says, are you meditating now? And she says, I was until you started talking to me. So are we in this strange arena now where perhaps people aren't listening to you when you're talking to them because they're meditating with their eyes open? It's all a bit weird if you ask me. Um, Siobhan Jordan, yes, I do that, commonly known as zoning out, absolutely. Edward Bevington, God blimey, you've become a sort of health um, a meditation guru, Edward. Concentrate on the peaks and troughs of your breathing, don't hold nothing. Yeah, don't hold anything. Bet she never fills the dishwasher herself, and I bet she certainly doesn't change the salt at the bottom of a dishwasher, because at the end of the day, who the hell does that? And do you ever find like a really annoying teaspoon right at the back, which has possibly been making all those plates not get finished? For the last three months and even though you possibly know there's still one in there you never really bend down to go and have a look do you the only person who's in our dishwasher the most is chi chi she just you know she knows when it's getting filled she knows there's a little chance to get a bit of a licking so uh so anyway there you go there's gwyneth paltrow uh, meditate with your eyes open so you know if you see us just sitting there just looking at you don't worry we haven't had a stroke we're not absent we're not we're just meditating and you know i don't know bored meditating i don't know she must make such boring company i'd love to meet her though faith i'd love to meet her i'd love to know if everything about her is just swishy swoony kind of smoothie woody and all that kind of stuff i don't know why i think if i immediately met gwyneth paltrow i'd, I'd start talking like hi how are you 
Could we light a candle together? You wouldn't know if something you were doing was some kind of strange come on, would you? You'd be like, I'm just blinking. And she'd be like, oh, that's the erotic blink move. <laughs> no, I'm just blinking. You're firing eyelash air at me. Ooh, ooh. Let's bottle your eyelash claps and put them in a box and sell them. Anyway, Gwynny, Gwynny, Gwynny. Goopy, goopy, goopy. Okay, Keir Starmer's really fucked me off. Yet again, I've heard more from Keir Starmer in the last 24 hours about a fucking football shirt than I have about his proper fucking approach to Israel and Gaza. Well, not Israel. I know his approach to Israel. His party's paid by Israel. David Lammy has just, his pay, was paid £70,000, Shadow Foreign Secretary, by a major uh, Israeli donor, curiously, 10 days before the ceasefire vote. The Labour Party is absolutely compromised and unable to, to take any stance on the Israel-Gaza uh, crisis with any dignity. But we can hear fucking so many pieces about Keir Starmer and his annoyance with the England, England kit. The England kit? And after it dawned on me last night, shortly after the Curly Cooks, I saw the story come in and I was just like, oh, fucking hell, I've just realised it. He's a geezer. Not that I have a problem with geezer, but he's a geezer. He's geezer. Oh, man, football's more important to him than anything else. And that's how he's going to play it. He's, oh, and I just thought, I know exactly. Oh, I just suddenly, so many pieces of the jigsaw slotted into place. I kid you not. Check out the donations to this party. An unforgivable leader who threw Gaza under the humanitarian bus and didn't correct himself for seven to nine days and then scuppered the potential for any kind of alternate ceasefire demand. And now, and I just have to sort of lead on from this, because, I mean, basically he's got upset because the England team who want to change the want to change the, the St. George's Cross. So hang on a minute. He's not only he's not only getting cross about a change to... So what they're putting on the kind of collar, I think, is rather than just the red George Cross, they funkified it, which I... You know what? I actually looked at it and I thought, oh, I quite like that because it takes the connotations out of it. But is Star, Starmer... Starmer is more, more activated about this. Goodbye, Keir. You know what? I think... There is a glaringly obvious possibility here that if someone like Penny Morden or a sort of liberal conservative was put at the helm of the Conservative Party with some heart or humanity, because at the moment we've got lots of men walking around with automaton eyes like teddy, like, like psychopathic teddy bears. Keir Starmer has the eyes of a psychopathic teddy bear. Rishi Sunak has the eyes of a psychopathic um, Wallace and Gromit character. I mean, they're kind of, and he's got all animated about a fucking about a kit. I, now, obviously, one can have an opinion on that, whether it should be, whether it shouldn't be. But I have seen more press coverage of Keir Starmer's response to uh, St. George's Cross than to him rolling back his comments about Israel having the right to turn off the water in Gaza. It, it just, I just had, they're just goodbye. Goodbye. Sorry. Ugh. Geezer. He's a geezer. He's a geezer. Don't get me wrong. I love geezers, but I don't love geezers who, who are pretending to be geezers. He's a pretend geezer. He's not a geezer geezer. He's a pretend geezer. MT, I don't think I do have a crush on Gwyneth, really. No, she's she's too willowy. I'm not, I'm, not a, I'm not a fan of willowy. It doesn't... I sort of... I don't know. Sort of... I mean, when I think of Gwyneth, I think of... When I think of Keir, I just think of... David Lammy. David Lammy. What a disappointment, David. How can you really... I don't understand how they can pretend to sustain some kind of argument for democracy when they're essentially bought. Their, 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 their politics are bought. But if the very fact of lobbying as a you know commercial or political endeavor compromises democracy 
Of course, no, absolutely, Faith Goodman. Of course, the reason he's talking about this so vociferously, he knows he can harness the the football that nothing Keir does is 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 genuine. It's just about some other strategy to access some other demographic within the country. So take your St. George's Cross nonsense and sling your up, geezer, geezer Starmer. Um, and on that note, just quickly before we get on to the silly stuff, because we have to go uh, on time today. UK could cut off arms to Israel in a week, says Tory Foreign Affairs Committee chief, amid fears for civilians. OK, so just quickly, without wanting to sort of get annoying and depressing, I know it's Friday and all that kind of stuff, but, but. Are we seriously at a point where after so much violence, so much destruction, so much well-reported examples of genocidal intent, genocidal actions, unqualified and qualified uh, international law breaking, um, the ICJ ruling of plausible genocide, the clear and apparent frustration and prevention of humanitarian aid getting in to the point that the West have to drop uh, airdrop aid in that then kills people who are hungry. After the shooting of hung, starving, they're not starving of their own will, but sp uh, Palestinians being starved by the Israeli occupation, um, being killed as they panic-strickenly struggle for food. Are you telling me are you telling me that our government, ministers, shadow ministers, the US government, even Blinken and the US as they bring this so-called UN resolution to the table for a ceasefire, are we all to now just stop and go, thank you so much? This is like, this is like a fight starting in a pub and you essentially stand outside the front door slipping knives in to one side of the fight uh, and they keep stabbing, stabbing and, they, and then suddenly... Everyone on the side that doesn't have knives, because you've been giving all the knives to this side, everyone on the side that doesn't have knives is, is dead. And then you walk through the door and go, oh, right, OK, I think we should stop send, send, sending knives. Sorry, sorry, not good enough. Not good enough. I mean, to put it bluntly, fuck off. What a load of old shit. Do not come late to the party claiming some acknowledgement of the awfulness of, of what's been going on when so many people who, who have already been saying this have been castigated, shadow banned, uh, careers and livelihoods destroyed, uh, marked as hate marchers, do not characterise everyone as, as, as anti this country, anti-Semitic, and then stand there and say, like it's some epiphany, oh, I think this is, I think what they're doing is wrong, and then expect a round of applause Sling your hook. Okay, moving on to sillier stuff. Well, before we get to the really silly stuff, I want to just quickly mention Rachel Johnson, obviously Boris's brother, I was going to say, sister. She says, okay, you know, let's let's just put what's wrong with Kate. Not really interested in. I'm, you know, poor woman. Let her just get on with. Let her get on with what what she's getting on with. But she makes an interesting point, Rachel Johnson, in this in this piece. It's an opinion piece in the in the Standard. Um, uh, she said at the beginning, is it Kate at the farm shop in the video? Why am I so obsessed? I'm beginning to wonder if I should self-section myself. Uh, these are big questions as it emerges that the deluxe line. Yeah, so we, she's talking about the fact that the clinic we we talked about earlier, where, you know, someone tried to hack into her, her medical data. So she talks about the video. She says, this is a couple that look like the whales is walking in a car park carrying plastic bags. And as, as she says, a few red flags. No husband would allow a wife who is convalescing to carry anything, let alone a well-brought-up prince, let alone a bulging plastic bag of groceries. Two, the woman looked nothing like Kate. She was younger, slimmer, faster, almost a walking advertisement for abdominal surgery. And then she says this, which I kind of agree with. She says, I was perplexed, perplexed as to why most of the mainstream media ran the video without question. And I began to doubt my own sanity. I know what she's driving at here. It's it's less about oh where were they there for and you know, but it's and it's not heavy. But but the point is is once again we receive this, this the news through the media, and we trust the checks and balances that they they make. 
And this is not even about really uh, Kate and 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 William and and whether it, in a weird it's a weird thing to say because it, it is about whether it's them or not. But it's also not about whether it's them or not. It's about the way in which the press force us to accept this information. And I think this does speak. You know, we were talking earlier in the week. Why do people speculate? Why do people? Why is there this feeding frenzy? I think you've got two categories of of people that jump on these stories. I think you've got the sort who've got a trolling axe to grind. They don't like someone. They just want to spill hate. They want to sp- spread hate. There'll be some that want to sort of drive the wedge again between the Megan and Kate and all that malarkey. Then you've got the anti-royalists who are kind of, you know, something else. But then I think you've also got the type of person, and maybe this is a little bit of why I keep coming back to this story, which is, um, it, you know, why do we accept... and you know, even the statement, it's not important, why does it matter? It doesn't matter in terms of Kate and what's happened to her. She should just, should have just been left. What does matter is the way we're manipulated and we never question it. And I think for some people challenging these clips, I think it's more about the fact of um, why, you know, who we shouldn't just trust these arbiters of news. We just shouldn't. We just shouldn't. And that makes it very hard within this world where you have the mainstream media, and then if you try and circumnavigate it in any way, you're characterized as a crackpot or a conspiracy theorist or what have you. So, you know, it is, it's tricky. We're in a, I think we're a tricky tipping point in information and news and what to trust. I really do. And anyway, I just thought the fact that Rachel Johnson was saying this, I, I think, you know, wouldn't, I don't know. I just, I just think less, again, less about, um, you know, what's Kate hiding? I don't think that's of interest at all. But what, why are we being manipulated? Or are we aware that we're being manipulated? And are we just all right? We're going, yeah, all right, fine. Yeah, that's her. That's fine. Better coffee today. Better coffee today. Okay, I want to share some images with you. And I want you to tell me who they are. Who's this? <laughs> when I saw this, I nearly spat my tea out. Well, except I wasn't drinking tea. Um, Ali P, mainstream media prevents people from thinking for themselves. This this is just shocking. This is shocking. Um, yeah, you've guessed it. That's a man with a disproportionately large ball. Morning, Lee. Hope you're well. Good to see you back. Um, it's not Rooney. No, he's a little longer than Rooney. Um, but he's making sure he's holding on to that ball. Uh, Harry Kane, Lee, you're absolutely right. This is the new sculpture, £7,000 sculpture that's going to be, I think it's going to be put in Chingford somewhere, um, of Harry Kane. Not a great looky likey, but I want to run through a couple of others to see if you know who they are. Uh, <laughs> this is the oddest bust I think I've ever seen. Um, should we have a guess as to who this is? <laughs> oh, my Lord. I mean... You know, bless him when he saw this. MT, Ronaldo, absolutely. I think even Ronaldo had a sense of humour about this. Um, I think someone said, thank God they didn't commit to the rest of the body. A very long neck, very wide neck as well. Um, <laughs> who's, who's this? Uh, looking svelte and beautiful. Um, oh, it's quite something. That's Jesus, Siobhan Jordan. That's, that's a good thought. Jesus, no. Jesus wasn't wearing a blue... A blue bodysuit. Sonia Donovan, no clue. Do you want to get um, G- <laughs> MT, Jesus? No. Uh, yeah, good God. This is <laughs> then Oprah. No, good shit. Bloody fuck. That's a good guess. Uh, Mother Teresa. Ah, right, Siobhan Jordan. That, are you getting close? I thought that. I thought that. It's uh, it's Melania Trump. <laughs> it's not Madonna, DT. Uh, who's this? I have to check who this one is, actually, because I didn't know who this one was. Uh, who's this? This is... Um, uh, <laughs> and any guesses for who this one is? Let's have a look. Uh, oh, right. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is uh, this is another footy footy one. Um, uh, football Thatcher. <laughs> good chip, lollipop. You're good at this. <laughs> Wayne asleep. Leo Sayer. Jackie Valino. No, it's uh, it's uh, Mo Salah, <laughs> Mo Salah. Um, uh, who's this one? Uh, who's, <laughs> who's this? No, uh, uh, this is um, 
<laughs> I thought I thought I thought this one was um oh what's the guy who did half a sixpence, half a sixpence, that film. This is not a sports person, actually. Um uh the Iron Lady, <laughs> literally the Iron Lady. Um and uh uh, John Travolta, no. They're all bloody scary, absolutely. Uh, no, this is Lucille Ball, believe it or not. Lucille Ball, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, I can't quite believe that. Okay, <laughs> moving on to this, who's that? <laughs> who's that? that? Tommy Steele, that's who I thought the other one was, Ellie, but you're absolutely right. That's exactly who I thought it was. Um, who's this? Uh <laughs> <laughs> Mia Angela, no, uh, my Angela, we're going to have to go. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do the quiz tomorrow, guys, because I'm running out of time. I'll, I'll put it on the end of uh, Lionel Richie. That's a great guest, Lee. Maradona, that's why I thought MT. No, this is the queen. <laughs> uh, the late queen. Um, who's that? Uh, it's slightly more obvious. Um, I, I recognize this one. Uh, hi, Madonna Salisbury. Welcome to see you. <laughs> Welcome to see you. <laughs> Lots more to come. There's going to be another Curly Cooks tomorrow. And uh, we do the coffee moaning papers. Lots of vlogs. Go and check them out. Um, <laughs> Nadia Sawala, says Lee Durant. Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, has anyone guessed this one? Uh, Capel Trainer. That's Kate Moss. Uh, what about this one? Uh, as we wrap up, as I say, the quiz, we'll do the quiz uh, Saturday morning because we don't want to go into the weekend feeling a total failure, do we? Um, uh, no. Uh, that's, um, that's <laughs> Jeepers. Yeah, no, that's, that's Johnny Depp. <laughs> this, this is hysterical. Please remind me to show you the photo of the person it's of looking at it at the unveiling tomorrow. Please, please ask me to, and I will, I will, I will show it to you. I will show it to you tomorrow. Um, uh, any idea who this could be? McAvoy. I mean, obviously the racket is a clue. Andy, Andy Murray, Amy May. And there is a photo of him looking at this. It's, it's Andy Murray. I mean, it could look less like Andy Murray if it tried. Uh, this one, um, that's kind of more obvious. That's Greta Thunberg. <laughs> and that one is obviously a temporary sculpture of, uh, yes. Do you want to see Andy Murray again? Those last two are so funny. Andy Murray. I mean, I, I mean, it's a it's a sixty five year old man wearing a suit of armor. Anyway, I thought that was I thought that was more than enough for a Friday. There you go. All right, guys. Well, look. As I say, we'll see you tomorrow for coffee moaning the newspapers. I'll show you the photograph of Andy Murray when he. Oh, thank you so much, Beryl. I would have forgotten. Thank you so much. Um, have a lovely day and some other content will be.